Welcome back. We are now looking at the final stage of the visual side of the view model controller. And here we'll just start with the artifacts here. I've just created some very basic art objects. Remember from our design layout, we had these defined. And so I've got these and I've actually got an active animated GIF there for when a user can click. Now I've got our tic-tac-toe class and I've also got a tic-tac-toe style sheet which I'll just quickly open right now. So you see here I've got a basic tic-tac-toe style sheet and you can see we've just defined font colors for the headings, uh, styles for the paragraphs and most importantly for the table also the, the layout for the tables which uh, is important. Now other than that we have basically our Deo include file which is part of the generated files we've got the class folder that comes with it and this is operationally under the htdocs folder of my xamp setup and then you can see also we've got the index and play which are the two main files remember index doesn't use anything else whereas play actually uses the include Deo also the tic-tac-toe class okay and this is what we've just finished in the last uh, presentation. So now if we have a little quick look at the index, you can see here it's quite quite a simple file. We've just got the style sheet included, the heading and the header for the HTML, and then we've got just the form method and it submits to the play PHP like we did on the the design layout and in the UML diagram. And then we've just got a text import which you know takes it as player name and we limit it to 45 characters which is the size in our database and we've got the submit so quite straightforward form then in our next the play PHP which it submits to again it's not overly complicated most of the work has been done by the tic-tac-toe control class but the first thing we've got here is just this redirection so a redirection needs to be done before any HTML tag in this case I'm testing whether the play name has been set as one of the get variables. Now if this is not set then I instantly redirect them back to the index PHP. Okay, you see this. Again we're using that same code that we did to create the links on the clickable cells in the tic-tac-toe controller. But in this case we're redirecting it to the index PHP and you see here that's defined there. And so this will instantly cause the browser to go straight back if this player name's not being given. So that's kind of handy to know and you can add this to any of your pages when you want to uh, ensure certain parameters there. Now I've just been using them as get parameters so you can actually see them more easily than um, post parameters. And so looking further down here where we've got the HTML, we've also got the style sheet being used and we can see we've got the heading and you, very much this is the visual aspects of it where we can allow artists to or designers to customize the look of this through their style sheets through modifying this web page here and basically give them control of visual elements without having any impact to hopefully the coding elements that we've developed like the tic-tac-toe controller class now what you'll see here is I've added, and remember there's a number of ways to do this, but I've just added this for simplicity's sake. I've just added a little bit of JavaScript, and this JavaScript, you know, it's similar to the way Ajax works, of course, and the fact that this is just calling a refresh timeout function, and this sets the timeout some sort of period, and then it'll actually refresh this whole page. In this case, every three seconds, uh, I'm triggering this a refresh of the page. Now, when this happens, it'll actually call the PHP or the play PHP again, and it'll go back through and uh, refresh the game state. And this is useful for if someone's moved. Now, if you had a more direct Ajax implementation, then you might actually have cells check whether they've changed state, or the grid actually check whether it's changed state more directly and, this, and just update that element within the page rather than refresh this whole page. But just for simplicity, I've, I've just done it this way. Now we've uh, included the Deo classes, this is important. And then we've also got the auto load for different classes. So this, in this case, when we go new tic-tac-toe, it'll trigger this auto load of the tic-tac-toe.class.php. So that's important that we've got this function above this. 
Now the next part is quite simply here, this is uh, the variations of page displays from where we just got a uh, new game displayed and waiting games to the game that they're currently being playing. And so here we can see the variations. So first we check the play name set, which it should be, otherwise it would have been redirected. And then we're checking whether the game ID is being set. Now if it's not being set, then we create a new tic-tac-toe controller with the play name and minus one for the, the actual game ID. And then in this case that uh, it might have actually found a game. So we're going to just check whether this particular player is not in game. We'll uh, show a new game and show waiting games and see we're adding just a bit of formatting to separate them. And otherwise they're in a game. So all we want to do is show their current game. And so again, we've got some titling and then the tic-tac-toe controller show game. And then we're showing the key below the game to say who is uh, which player. Then the next part, this is if basically the, the game ID is set, then we know we're currently in a game. So we're gonna initialize the game using the player name and the game ID. And in this case, we're also gonna have a position given. So for a game, uh, for a certain player, a game ID and a position. So we're gonna call move on the tic-tac-toe controller. So this is the second flow chart or the state diagrams. Uh, remember we did a couple of them and this is uh, one of the later ones where we're actually triggering a move. And in this case we'll then, after the move's been done, show the game which will show its updated state and we'll also show the game key. Now it could be the case that that move might have triggered the end of the game, therefore we'll ask after whether this is still in game. And if it's not, we'll then also show a new game grid and waiting game straight after it so the player can click straight into a new game or straight into any waiting game. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it. Now, if we want to then trigger this, I, I can show you it running in two modes. Firstly, just in normal mode, and then secondly, with the debug information on. So you can see here, we've got the debug information set to false. I'm just gonna say that, and then we're gonna trigger tic-tac-toe and here's the first page the index PHP we'll put in a player name called Jim and you can see here that it then presents a new play for Jim and it's actually presented a new game and these are the active cells and uh, if we click on one of them it's now gone back to play PHP but we're actually passed in the play name Jim game ID minus one because it was triggering a new game and we've clicked on the top corner which is position zero. So now that's filled in, the keys appeared as well. We've got no other play name because no one's joined us. So let's now join with um, another player. And, uh, Simone, and here we've got again the new game presented and it's actually found a, a waiting game and this is asking us to join. So here we could click and by clicking on that, we've actually got a game ID retrieved and the position is two. The key is displayed here for Jim and Simone. And if I click back to Jim's game, you'll see it's already updated and it's his go now because it's, it's active where the cells on Simone's are not. Now, that's the game in action. Now, if, if I go and utilize the, the debug information here and just change this debug to true, you just get a lot more feedback, which is really good for, during development as to what exactly is going on. So here you can see each of the steps, initialization of the objects, and you see that it displays the class name and the method name and the line number all through those magic predefines, which are really handy. And um, you see how I'm also echoing objects before I write them to the database. And you can see there basically all the steps the controller is taking. And same for Simone and, and the steps the controller is taking for Simone and the steps the controller is taking for Jim. And so this is really handy to have. And you know, especially when you don't have an integrated debugging environment, different debugging approaches, and this is just one. Anyway, I hope this has been useful. Uh, please look through all the documents and the designs and all the source code, and I hope you uh, find some use for it.